Welcome to Scan Squad. I'm Patty Teal here with Deputy District Attorney Vicki Johnson. What have you got today, Vicki? Hi, Patty. Well, I'd like to start with a couple of updates. As I've mentioned before, scams seem to come and go in waves, and we think one is gone for good because we don't hear so much about it, and then it comes back. So that's what's happening. Oh, and some scams seem to never go away, like the grandparent scam. That seems to be with us forever. What are people reporting on your fraud hotline? Well, I heard from a gentleman recently who wanted to report the utility scam. And this is the one where you get a phone call from someone claiming to be from Southern California Edison telling you that you didn't pay your bill. And as a result, your power is going to be shut off immediately. Hmm. And as I recall, this scam often targets businesses because the owner would be desperate to take keep his business open, would do anything that the scammer asked. Right. And so this call came into someone who ran a real estate agency, and he was told that if he didn't pay, the company would, quote, close the power. <laughs> oh, close the power. Right? I guess they mean turn his utilities off. What did he do? Well, fortunately, he knew about this scam, so he just hung up. But I was very grateful that he called me because I hadn't heard about this scam for quite a long time. Um, I thought it was maybe uh, gone and done, um, and I needed to know that it was still going on so that I could warn our listeners. Yeah, that's good. And what else are you hearing about? Well, I got a phone call from a woman who is 94 years old and sharp as a tack. So a scammer called her and said that she owed $450 to renew a service that she had signed up for when she purchased her cell phone. Wow, that could fool a lot of people who might not remember what services they purchased with their phone, especially if they've had their phone for a while. So what did she do? Well, as I said, this woman was sharp as a tack and she knew she hadn't purchased any such service. So she told them so, and um, then she just hung up. So Patty, the other thing that I wanted to talk about today comes from an article that I read in the news publication, Rudders. And we have been talking a little bit about those, who those terrible people are that try and scam us out of our money. And this disturbing article gives us some more insight. Yeah, and one of our episodes, and I encourage people to listen to it on YouTube, was about the Jamaican high school student who got caught up in the lottery scam as a way to get out of poverty. What else did you find out? Well, here's the byline from this Rudder's article. Thai and Cambodian police uncover and break up what they say is part of a wider Chinese-run transnational crime racket that has ensnared thousands of people from around Asia. And the, ar the article goes on to say that the police rescued 66 Thai nationals from captivity in Cam Cambodia, where they were either forced or tricked into working as scam callers. My gosh, that's unbelievable. How did it happen? Well, it happened through ads on social media. We know social media can be good and it also can be bad. So these workers were lured into Cambodia by these ads that promised high paying jobs. So like the Jamaican case, it's the promise of a better life. Did the workers get these high paying jobs that they were promised? No. Unfortunately, it turned out to be a human trafficking operation. So once they got to Cambodia, the racketeers forced them to work in these call centers, making scam calls in their own languages. But can't they refuse to do it? Well, according to the Thai assistant police commissioner, if they refused, they were beaten, they were whipped, they were even electrocuted. And some were locked into dark rooms and not given food. And I'm guessing that like sex trafficking cases that the racketeers confiscate the passports. So even if these folks can't escape, they can't get home. I must say, Vicki, this is really shocking. I never think of the scammers as being victims like this. How extensive is this? Well, apparently this is a Chinese run racket that has enslaved, get this, thousands, thousands of people from all over Asia. And the full extent of the racket is still unclear. 
Are the police actively working to try to rescue these people? Yes, they are. Since last October, more than 800 Thai men and women have been rescued from these call centers, but they estimate that more than a thousand are still working in some of the bigger cities. Where do the racketeers house these victims? Well, apparently these scam call centers are like, and this is a quote, slave compounds where thousands of foreign nationals are trapped. That's unbelievable. Again, I just can't even imagine. I didn't know such a thing went on. Are the governments of Thailand or Cambodia taking any steps to warn people about this? Yes, they are. Foreign embassies in several of these countries are issuing warnings about answering these suspicious job ads. But, you know, people in poverty will do whatever they need to do to try and better their life. And that is what is happening here. And Patty, I do want to say that these are outlier situations. It's terrible that these things are happening and it's terrible that these persons are enslaved this way, but we really have to understand that most scammers are not these folks. Most scammers are just business people who get caught up in making money and trying to scam people. And they are just running uh, these terrible businesses or they're part of gangs that are preying on vulnerable victims by these various scams. But we do need to know that this situation, situations like this do exist. Wow, slave, slave compounds. Who would have thought that would ever be going on in this day and age? Yeah, terrible. So Vicki, would you remind our listeners of the fraud hotline? Yes. Uh, if you want to report a fraud, and even if you weren't victimized, even if you were smart enough to figure out what was going on, please let me know. Because like I said at the beginning of this program, sometimes old frauds resurface, old scams come back. And it's good for me to know that's happening because then I can warn our listeners and remind them that these in fact are scams. So the fraud hotline is area code 805 568-2442. And I'll repeat that 805-568-2442. And I really do welcome your calls. Thank you so very much, Vicki. I look forward to hearing what you have to warn us about next week. Thank you, Patty. Okay, bye now. Bye.